Come on, baby, don't fail me now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Woo! Oh, I missed. I missed because you were distracting me. Guys, how are you doing? It's certainly been a while. Um, been a lot of current weirdness lately around the world. But, you know, soon I'll start making videos again. I had a few issues to deal with. But soon we'll be getting back to par, back to form. Have a good one and enjoy this video. with the camera. <laughs> anyway, Woo! top quality, Brazilian. This is going to be the real deal, people. Finally got my hands on this. Woo! That's the good stuff. I like it. I like it. Well, here we go. Oh, the quality is in inestimable, beyond comprehension. Oh. oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel like a new man. I feel energized enough to make another video. Hey, check this out. New clues to the origin of life. We're putting the clues together about the new way we're looking at life. And don't forget, sub and share and woohoo! Hi everyone. In my videos I've uncovered new clues to the origin of cellular life and would like to share them. This man, Bernardo de Polo, lived to 114 years of age. Some say he was a fraud and actually lived to be only 104. He credited his longevity to taking five foods daily. Among them was olive oil. He never had any aches or pains or sickness or needed any care. He wasn't like other 110-year-olds or even 100-year-olds. During an ABC Arizona interview, at alleged age 110, he was perfectly healthy, of comparatively youthful appearance and even floating with the reporter. Experiments on rats shows that those who are given olive oil live 30% longer. Other rats were given olive oil infused with buckyballs, carbon-60. These rats lived 90% longer or more. In fact, in some experiments, they had to kill the rats because they just refused to die. Do we have here a clue to the origin of life? It is speculated that the C60 balls with 60 atoms of carbon actually encapsulate free radicals, protecting the body. Darwin and others always presumed life originated in a kind of swamp. In a 1980s book, Seven Clues to the Origin of Life, the author Graham Ken Smith claimed to have found the ultimate cure to early life in clays. He said the alternating charges of the structures would have served as a kind of template for the initial assemblage of rotational genetic codes like DNA. He said that DNA has left no clues as to its origin because it's assembled by a protein. A protein is a biological workbench or tool used to assemble things. It is also created by DNA code. So, it's like the chicken and egg conundrum. But it must have originated from somewhere. Non-life, we presume. In the previous video on black holes, we saw that the blackest substances are known as carbon nanotubes. These are found in oil wells, in burnt wood, in arc lamps, everywhere. It's the same story with buckyballs. Scientists have recently found that if they add a metal catalyst, nanotubes encapsulate DNA, like an onion. They found that single-wall nanotubes are formed in the presence of a catalyst, and multi-wall nanotubes don't even need a catalyst, just carbon and high energy. We know that some people actually ingest charcoals, hoping that the charcoal will absorb toxins. These charcoals contain nanotubes and buckyballs. Charcoal absorbs all kinds of things. From this we know that nanotubes and buckyballs might both concentrate, as well as contain, biological substances. Bingo. Are multi-walled nanotubes actually the first cells? Using some extinct genetic code, which current code, like DNA, has pushed out of existence? Will we still find this code someplace in the earth, attached to a rock? Maybe if we start to test rocks, we will start to find the biochemical signature of this code. These are carbon nanotubes, 
They actually look like acidobacteria, which are found in hot springs, soils, and inside the earth. Here is a Martian meteorite from Antarctica. It's called Allen Hill's 84001. Back in 1996, everyone got very excited because it was held to be proof of life on Mars. Electron microscopy of its surface revealed strange life-resembling structures. The skeptics said, hang on, the bacteria are too small. Bacteria are usually 10 to minus 6 metres, uh, known as micrometres. These are measured on a scale of 10 to minus 9 nanometres. Bacteria just aren't these small. Actually, these are the size of carbon nanotubes. A cell is a strong membrane in animals or wall in plants. The brick structure allows plants to grow tall like skyscrapers. Could multi-wall nanotubes or even buckyballs have encapsulated the first life as they are able to both absorb and concentrate biological nutrients? This is the last science vid for a while. I promise I'll get back to the regular archaeology videos soon. I can't help making the science videos because when something pops up and I think it's important, I like to connect the dots and then tell people about it immediately. What do you think? Leave a comment, share the video, thumbs up, sub, bell. I've got books on Amazon and check my patron and Merc. Your support and viewership is appreciated. Cheers. Oh yeah, well people, um, I've written not just two books that I keep talking about, but actually five. Um, I wrote this back in 2015, Ancient Egyptian Spells Not to Try at Home. Now, uh, what I noticed was there are two um, translated manuscripts which are ancient Egyptian spell books, straight from ancient Egypt. And they were circulating uh, in the academic world, but I thought, wow, this could be really useful for people who are fascinated by how the spells work and how you can make stuff. Um, or, or what, what, what hymns or whatever to, to use uh, to do Egyptian spells. Although I, I, there is a disclaimer, I try at home, I'm not a magician or anything like that. Just for historical interest, but you know, it's very interesting. Um, so what I did was, there was no spell index. The index was based on geographical names and useless stuff like that. So I thought I'll add a spell index. So I added a spell index to it, an introduction. Uh, I did it under a different name, Alastair Blackwell, because I thought I don't want to ruin my reputation just yet. Um, and I run a workshop business, so um, I've written about public speaking is easier than you think, and also success is easier than you think. I was running a workshop business until this hysteria took over, but hey, there you go. There you go. Check that out on Amazon. That's really cool as. Um, yeah. So I've got lots of stuff on Amazon. There you go. Have a good one. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yes! No. Guys, there's been a lot of crap happening lately with all this crazy stuff around the world. I just wanted to wish you a very good day! Yeah!